now let's turn it on. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, some of you might forget, might, some of you might have forgotten slope, some of you might remember it. Let's just take a look at these two points, all right? Remember, every point, every point we have has what we call an x and a y coordinate. Right? Okay. So let's plot these on a graph. If I was going to plot these on a graph, remember the first coordinate is your x. That tells you where to go on your x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I go down to negative 4 and then down 1 to negative 1. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. This is part of actually your notes, so you guys might want to take out. Oh, actually, no, right? I'm sorry. Use that. Yeah, I gave you that organizer. Use that organizer. We'll take the formal notes next class period. So just use the organizer. You guys already have a graph, right? So let's plot the two points. So I plotted negative 4, 1. And then let's plot the point 4, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Try to make it as exact as I can. So that's 4, comma, negative 5. Does everybody remember how to graph points, coordinate points? Or we're kind of cool on that one. OK. So we connect our two points. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, let's discuss all right, our definition of slope. All right. Basically, all slope is, it's the change in our y values over our change in our x values. So if you look at this, sometimes we say steepness or rise over run and all this other kind of stuff. But what we're going to do is I'm going to create a right triangle from here. So if you guys see, from, to go from this, if I was going to read this graph from left to right, am I going up or am I going down? down. I'm going down, right? So what I'm doing is my y values are going down, right? As my x values go to the right, my y values are going down, correct? How much is that? What is that rate? So it's a ratio of how when you go to go between one point to another, how far over are you going? And then how far up or down are you going? So let's determine this. How far over do I have to go from this point to the next point? How far over am I going? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you can go 8. Then how far down are we going? 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So the ratio, so what happens is the change, do you see? And we're going from here down to 4 units. Yeah, but it's the coordinates negative 5. Right. So what, oh, I'm getting to that. So what we did, though, I'm just saying the change in direction is over 8 and then down 4. So since I went down, I still went 4 units. But since it's in the negative direction, we make this a negative 4. Does that make sense? OK. So as I go right 8, down 4. Now remember, slope. What is slope? Slope is your change in your y value. So how far did I change vertically in between my y values? How much did I change? Four. Negative 4. Make sure you include the direction. How far did I change vertically? Or I'm sorry, horizontally? Eight. OK? That's where we get the rise over the run. Rise tells you how far you're going up and down. Run's telling you how far you're going left and right. Does that kind of make a little sense? OK. Now, what if I wanted to read it from right to left? Just a little FYI. How far did I go? To go from here to here, I went how far over? Negative 8, though, right? Because now you're going left, so it's in the negative direction. Up, I go positive 4. So is this equivalent? Are those the same? Yeah. yeah, they both give you negative 1 half, right? When you reduce it, it both gives you negative 1 half. So what we call the slope, or sometimes m, which we'll explain why, is going to be m equals negative 1 half. OK? Now, I'm not done yet. Because ladies and gentlemen, not always are you going to have a graph, are you? No. Right? The graph is pretty easy. You can just say, oh, I count how far over, count how far up, change in y over change in x. But ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times you don't have a graph. So what are you going to do? So um, how do we find the difference between your two values? Think about it. I just said it. How do you find the difference? Subtract, right? So if I want to find the difference between the y values, I need to subtract them. So I don't care which y values you subtract. You just need to make sure it's consistent. Now, since these are both y values, I'm going to distinguish them. 
I'm going to say that's y1 and that's y2. Because if I didn't say that and I asked Chase, I said, Chase, what's the y coordinate? You, and you said negative 1, but what if I was thinking negative? Those are both y coordinates, right? So if I say what's y1, you know it's negative 1. Right? If I say what's y2, you know it's negative 5. But if I had to say what's y, it could be either one of those answers. So we're going to do that for the same x's. You're going to label them x1, y1, and y1, or x2, y2, just to differentiate. So how do we find the slope? I, you've changed, it's the difference in the y or the difference in the x, the change, right? the difference in the y coordinates. So the slope standard formula we just write is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It really doesn't matter which x and which y you subtract from each other as long as you're consistent. So if I do x2 minus x1, you have to do y2 minus y1. You can't go like x2 minus x1 and then y1 minus y2. You got to do it the same way. So what's y2? Negative 5 minus y1, which is negative 1. And make sure you guys put this stuff in parentheses when you do this. What's x2? 4 minus negative 1, or negative 4. Okay, Double negative makes it a what? Positive. positive. Negative 5 plus 4 plus 1, or negative 5 plus 1 is? Negative 4, negative four over Eight. double negative. Positive, 4 plus 4 is? Is that the same answer that we received by doing the graph? Yes. Does that kind of make a little sense? Kind of? OK. Good. So you guys can keep that. We'll do some more formal notes next class period.